a chance for that part? Would I say it if I didn't mean it? See these? Sincerity lines. They're very becoming. <laughs> Is it really a good play? Does David Prinzfeld put on bad plays? And... No, of course not. Hey, wait a minute. I thought David Prinzfeld's play was already cast. It was. They're recasting this part. Why? What happened to the other girl? She went to a convent a week before rehearsal. So? So she doesn't want to come out. Oh, well, that's what she wants. I think that's beautiful. Beautiful? Do you have any idea how much is 10% of a nun's salary? I never thought of it like that. That's the trouble with actors. You're all alike, selfish. Here's the address. You want to audition? Of course I do. Tell me something about the character. Well, she's a girl, she walks on stage, and she says words. <laughs> you're a big help. I'm trying to make an impression. Look, Anne, you're a nice girl from a good family. Don't worry, he'll be impressed. That's not what I mean. I mean, if she's from the far north, then she'd have a ruddy complexion. That'd be a pancake number five. From the west, a pancake number three. The south, a number two. Uh, she's from uh, Kansas City. That's very safe. Kansas City, that's halfway between New York and California. I'd use a number five pancake and... and a medium rouge. Princeville's office, 1215. I'll pick up my pink skirt and blouse from the cleaners. That's Midwest sexy. <laughs> no interest, no drive, no ambition. That's what's the matter with that girl. <laughs> followed me all the way home from the cleaners. Now, you're a very nice doggy, and it's been a pleasure meeting you. But I'm in a big hurry, and I have to go to an audition. downstairs that says no pets allowed. So I couldn't invite you in even if I had the time, which I don't. Now go on, go home. <laughs> okay. One quickie bowl of milk, then home you go. Is that a deal? <laughs> All right, come on in. Now just a minute, I'm entitled to know your name. No tags. Okay, doggy, I'll get your milk, then home you go. A deal's a deal, okay? That's a good little doggy. Drink it all up. I don't want to be late. Hi, Daddy. Oh, come in for just a minute. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. What I mean is I've got an appointment. That's okay, honey. Are you in need of money or sage advice? Well, as a matter I'll of fact... I'll start with the advice. Don't ask for money. All I really want is a little bit of affection and a heartfelt goodbye. My pleasure, sir. Ow! He bit me. Oh, you're kidding. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Look at this. I've been mangled. Oh, my gosh, he really did bite you. Who is he, anyway? He's a total stranger. I'll get some money. Iodine burns. Get Mercurichrome. You've got a lot of nerve. Now, you listen to me. Okay, Daddy, this will fix you right up. I can't understand why he bit me. I love dogs. Okay. How big a hole did he make? Oh, the outside skin is barely broken. Feels like that killer severed an artery. Well, the bleeding has already stopped. Where did he come from, anyway? I don't know. He followed me home. There. Now, that'll be okay. Now, don't you worry. Daddy, I really gotta get going. Hi. Anyone for lunch? 
Hello, Mr. Murray. Since when do you have a key to my daughter's apartment? Uh, since five seconds ago. Honey, you left the key in the door again. Oh, thank you, darling. I have a very important audition. I'm kind of in a hurry. Good luck. Dinner tonight. Yeah, great. What happened to your ankle, Mr. Murray? It was torn to shreds by a ferocious dog. <laughs> what dog? I don't know. It was a friend of Ann's. Uh, well, uh, that, that ankle doesn't look too bad. It looked a lot better before he bit me. Yes, sir. I suppose I should consider myself lucky I wasn't sitting down. He'd have gone for my throat. Or he might have been a bigger dog, or he might have been rabid, or he might... Rabid? What, what do you mean, rabid? <laughs> I, I, I was just being facetious. Never mind what you were being. What do you mean by rabid? Well, you, you know, uh, rabies, hydrophobia. Are you telling me that that dog might have had hydrophobia? <laughs> no, sir, I was just trying to make a joke. What kind of a joke is that? Well, I was only attempting to make you feel better. Do you know what happens to a man who's bitten by a dog with hydrophobia? He goes out of his mind. He runs around howling at people and eating out of garbage cans. Okay, I've really got to get going now. What time tonight, Donald? Oh, uh, was 7, 7.30. Fine. Bye, Dad. <sighs> What's the matter? I'm getting dizzy and my mouth is dry. I, I was just making a joke and your father took me too seriously is all. <laughs> what sort of a joke, Donald? I've got rabies. How's that for a laugh? You told Daddy he has rabies? No, I didn't. He just assumed. Assumed nothing. You said it was possible. Donald, did you say it was possible? Honey, anything's possible. Well, Donald, how could you even suggest such a silly thing? Will you stop arguing and call a doctor? But Daddy doesn't... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're all being unnecessarily emotional. I'd like to inject a note of reason. Fine. But call a doctor at the same time. Okay, Daddy, it'll make you feel better. <clears throat> Mr. Marie... Mr. Marie, rabid dogs are very hard to come by in the heart of New York City. And if you did find one, there would probably be some indication of the disease. You know, foaming at the mouth. Or... This dog had foam all over his face. That was milk, Dad. Besides, he'd show some sort of erratic behavior. He bit my leg. Is that the act of a rational dog? No, may I please speak with Dr. Pretty? Mr. Marie, Mr. Marie, the simple solution would be to turn the dog over to the ASPCA for test. That way you'd be absolutely certain. Well, why doesn't somebody do it? I'd be happy to. Where is he? I don't know. He ran out of the apartment. Well, could you reach him, please? Yes, this is Anne Marie. It's very important. Yes, I'll hold. <clears throat> Anne. Anne, do you have any idea where I might find the dog? No, I never even saw that dog before today. Well, I'm going to have a look around the neighborhood. What do you need the dog for? Because there's one sure way to put your father's mind at ease, and that's by turning the dog over to the authorities for tests. Oh, hello, Dr. Pretty? Yes, this is Anne Marie. Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. It's my father. Well, he's over visiting me, and he's had an accident. Yes, a dog bit him. I'm, I'm dizzy, and my mouth is dry. <laughs> he's a little dizzy, and his mouth is dry. Oh, that'd be wonderful, Doctor. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Marie, what did the dog look like? I can't remember anything but teeth. Daddy, the doctor's on a call not far from here. He'll come over on his way back to the office. Uh, what are we supposed to do in the meantime? Well, he said that if you're dizzy, sit down, and if you're dry in the mouth, then have a glass of water. Wonderful. It certainly is comforting to know that you're in such capable hands. And what did the dog look like? I'm going to try and find him. Well, uh, he, he's brown and white, and he has cute little ears and a big bushy tail. Anne, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I'll find him. You take it easy. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Daddy. Hello. Oh, hi, Harry. Yeah, I know I'm late, but something's happened. Is that the doctor? No, it's my agent. Well, my father was bitten by a dog. Well, I know Mr. Princefeld's got a thing about punctuality, but I've got a thing about my father. <laughs> and he could have a very severe case of rabies. <laughs> well, I really don't care. You can just tell him anything you like. But don't let him give the part to anybody else. Miss Marie, is this what you call an accident? Well, I didn't know what else to call it. You should have been here to see how excited everybody was. That's nothing more than a tiny skin puncture. How big a hole does a rabies germ need? Who said anything about rabies? I did. Why? Well, it all started out as sort of a joke. What's funny about rabies? That's what I said. Since you opened the can of peas, any breaking of the skin is sufficient for infection. Daddy, will you please stop talking about rabies? We have no proof that dog was rabid. What dog? The one with the crazy look in his eyes and the foam on his mouth. Who bit me and ran away. You're kidding. Uh, Daddy, that was milk. Maybe it was milk. But maybe it wasn't. Did you report this to the health department? Well, no. You see, Donald, uh, my boyfriend, he, he went out to find the dog, and I called you. Where's and... the phone? Doctor, 
Do you really think that... I'm a doctor, Miss Marie. There are times we can't afford to think. We have to act. Oh, excuse me. Hi, Donald. Any luck? Not a sign. I guess he's lapping up a bowl of milk in some other kind-hearted lady's apartment. Anyway, I've got a search organized. The doctor? Yes, he's calling the health department. Priddy. Dr. Philip L. Priddy. P-R-I-double-D-Y. No, we're not totally certain, but uh, there's no sense taking any chances with the security of a city. Well, it isn't necessary to alarm anyone. No, I haven't spoken with a newspaper. Should I? Well, if you do, it's P R I <laughs> Dr. Pretty, I'd like you to meet my boyfriend, Donald Hollinger. How do you do? The city's sending over an investigator. Is there anything we can do in the meantime? Find the dog. Well, Doctor, what if we can't find the dog? Uh, ever. Then I will have to administer the Pasteur anti rabies vaccine series to your father. And that'll be followed by a lot of. Television interviews and write up. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Harry. Listen, Harry, I'm sorry, but I just can't leave now. Well, what would you do if you were me and your father had rabies? I don't believe you. Your own father? <laughs> Clients come first? Uh, yes, Harry, that, that sort of loyalty is very touching. Uh, look, would you just tell Mr. Princefeld that I'll be there as soon as I can? Thank you so much, Harry. I appreciate it. Bye. Anne. Honey, look, why don't you go? Everything that can be done is being done. I've offered a dollar a dog for any stray that fits the description. The doctor is here, and the odds against your father having rabies are a million to one. Why one? What do you mean? Well, why not a million to nothing? Oh, honey, because to be completely truthful and mathematically accurate, there has to be some speck of doubt. Well, I just can't take that kind of a chance, Donald. What chance? Nine times out of ten, I'll lose a job that's a million to one. I'll get it. What? Don't tell me about mathematics. Mathematics never works. Well, Miss Anne Marie? Yes, sir. I'm Ketchum from the Department of Animal Bites. Oh, certainly. Please come in. This is Mr. Hollinger of Newsview Magazine. Oh, then it is rabies. Huh? Right. No, sir. I'm here unofficially. Oh, well, where's the victim? Oh, please don't say that. Don't say what? The victim. It sounds so final, doesn't it, Donald? Yes, yes, it does. Uh, sorry, uh, where's the, uh, bitey? He's my father. His name is Lou Marie, and he's right in the bedroom. Excuse me, Sally. Catch him, Department of Animal Bites. Dr. Philip L. Priddy. <laughs> P-R-I-double-D-Y. <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> How is he, doctor? Reasonably comfortable. Say, did you uh, say you were with Newsview magazine? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Well, you may say that everything that can be done is being done. This is a time of vigil, patience, faith. In my experience, I've seen several cases comparable to this one. One was in 1962. Uh, did you want to get any of this down? Uh, no, no, no. I'm not here in a professional capacity. I'm just a friend of the family's. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, please, tell me the truth. Suppose we can't find the dog. It's a million to one against the dog having rabies. I think I'd better tell you, Doctor, that's not very comforting. <laughs> Miss Marie, even if the dog were rabid, the vaccine offers an excellent chance of complete recovery. Oh. Doctor, would you please translate that? An excellent chance of complete recovery into odds, uh, medically speaking. <laughs> better than 50-50. Really? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> feel better? Well, I do now. A million to one's not nearly as good as better than 50-50. Nine times out of ten. David, how can you expect the girl to leave now? I know you work when you're sick. <laughs> But how many David Prince felt are there in this world? The vaccine's on its way. I want you to know I've canceled all other calls and consultations, and I've turned over my office appointments to another doctor. Thank you, doctor. However, I may slip out for a haircut. <laughs> of course, Dave. Right, Dave. I understand, Dave. Oh, hello, boys. Where's the guy who's looking for the stray dogs? He's out looking for stray dogs. We brought you three dogs, and we want three dollars. Oh, well, 
I don't know if these dogs qualify. Anne, can I see you for a minute? Oh, yes. Uh, come on in, fellas. Just excuse me for one minute. That's good. Thank you. What's the matter, Harry? Prince Felt can't wait past 3 o'clock. Well, what time is it now? It's uh, 20 after 1. Maybe I can still make it. Well, if you can, you can. And if you can't, you can't. I'm sorry, Harry. I know how much my getting this part is meant to you. It's my luck. Do you have any skim milk? I think so. Please. Body temperature. Your office call. These are your messages listed in order of anger. Actors. The vaccine's on its way by special messenger, just in case. Oh, fine. Is it very painful? It's not bad, but it won't be a pleasure. Oh, Doctor, why don't you go inside and explain the whole thing to my father? J just to kind of prepare him for it. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Listen. You haven't been off my mind for a minute. Wonderful hearing your voice again. Oh, the reason I haven't returned your calls? Uh, I'm still in Miami Beach. I know exactly how you feel. Right, of course. And I don't blame you for being angry. Yes, absolutely. Look, listen, I swear to you, I haven't been out of this hotel room since I arrived. You hear that? Room service. Just <laughs> one for you and a buck for you. Did you check these three out? Yeah, they're not even close. Okay, man, thanks. Want to keep the dogs you paid for them? <laughs> okay, man, get out there and try again. Search the whole neighborhood. Come on, you can do it. Get out there. I call the office and explain why I haven't been in all day. Oh, I'm sorry, Don. I don't want you to get in trouble. Look, you go. I'm fine. On the contrary. They want me to stick around, and they're sending a photographer. Get away from me. I don't care what you say. No, no, over my dead body. You don't come near me with one of those things. Mr. Marie, a hypodermic needle isn't going to kill you. It could make me faint. Now, please, the doctor's only trying to help you. He doesn't know a thing about me. I have a very sensitive body. Illness is no excuse for rudeness. If illness isn't, what is? No, <laughs> no it's not. Quiet, please, quiet! Please, quiet. <laughs> it's a fight about your billing. <laughs> Anne Marie live here? Yes, that's right. My name is Bounder. I'm from Newsview. Oh, how are you? I'm Hollinger. How are you? What's the scene here? Well, nothing as dramatic as they think. Miss Marie's father's been bitten by a dog. Is he dead? No. That's him on the couch. He looks okay. He is okay. Then what do they want me to shoot? I don't know. Is there a Dr. Pretty here? I'm Pretty. I'm from the medical center. I have your rabies vaccine. Thank you. Rabies vaccine? Yeah, well, you see, it started as a joke. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Bounder from Newsview. Who are you? Dr. Philip L. Pretty, P R I W D Y. I'm the uh, physician in charge. Oh. Well, let's uh, get a shot of you and the messenger together, Doctor. Uh, you be taking the serum. Who are you? Ketchum, Department of Animal Bites. A N I M A L Bites. <laughs> no, anybody got anything going back uptown? <laughs> Daddy, do you want me to call Mother? No, 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 don't do that. She'll get all upset, drive down here, and have an accident. And if there's one thing I don't need right now, it's to have my automobile insurance canceled. <laughs> Oh, hi. Come on in, fellas. Come on in. Come on right in here. We'll have a, a look right here. That a boy. And, and we have some more dogs. Excuse me, Dad. Thank you. Here we are. Now, does that look like it would hurt? Why do you have to give it to me with a needle? Why can't I take it in orange juice? How about these? No. None of them? No, I'm sorry. Okay, here you go. Thank you very much. Thank Keep you, looking. Honey. Here you are. Here's your dollar. Thank you Here's very there. much. Here's your dollar. Keep looking, boys. How about that one? Look. You sure? Okay, here you go. There you go. Thanks very much. Keep looking. Here. No. Here you go. Keep looking, boys. Uh, uh. <laughs> Wait a minute. I distinctly said small, brown and white, and a bushy tail. No doubt. Oh, Donald, for heaven's sakes. Here, sweetheart. We very much appreciate your sincere effort. Bye-bye. Look for a small one. About one-third of that size. <laughs> And I have some great news. Prince Feld's gonna give me the part? No, I was just talking to the doctor. The incubation period for rabies is 20 days. So, you can have your audition, open out of town, and still be back in plenty of time. Oh, no, forget it. Something tells me that's just not gonna work out. Okay, okay. <laughs> Anne, Anne, sweetheart. 
It takes a big man to admit he's wrong. Well, I'm admitting it. Wrong about what, Daddy? Well, this whole business started out as a casual comment, and I made a big deal about it. Hollinger, you, you were right. It is a superficial scratch, and, well, it was a perfectly healthy dog. Well, Mr. Marie, in all honesty, I never said it was a perfectly healthy dog. I, actually, I never even saw the dog at all. Yeah, but, but you, you, you laughed about it. You, you said you were only making a joke. And that's right, Donald. You did say that. I know I did, but that, a lot has happened since then. It's time. Can you please tell this man to take that needle away? Uh, Mr. Murray, I can't take that kind of responsibility. What's the matter? Are you yellow? You're asking me to gamble with your life. Well, I certainly am not going to gamble now, with it. Mr. Never mind now, Mr. Murray. 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 Mr.